All right. Dave's back. It's NFL draft time on Prime Sports Network, the R Lads Football Network. For what are we? We're now into uh, March 13th. Uh, it's been a few weeks since uh, since we've talked, Dave, and uh, I, I assume you had a lot of work to do. <laughs> That's putting it lightly. Uh, this is the time of year where I, I feel like I'm in a cave uh, for as much time as I am allowed to spend on uh, the draft guide, the reports, the team reports, the R Labs draft guide. Uh, but I wouldn't have it any other way. It, it's definitely the most intense two months of the process, but. This is where a lot of it comes together, and it's exciting to see the finished project, uh, pro- finished product. That's the whole thing. Yes, it is exciting the closer we get, and there are going to be a lot of changes taking place here in the next couple of days with free agency kicking off. So we decided we're going to do uh, one more mock draft just before free agency kicks off, and then we're going to do another mock draft the first week of April because that'll be pretty much free agency be done and we'll have a lot more of, a, of, of an understanding of trades and things of that nature of because uh, we just saw a big one with Carolina. Mm-hmm. And then our final mock draft will be the week of the NFL draft. We're also going to be doing our final previews of every team. These will be our updated previews. And instead of doing 32 individual previews, we are going to do four for each division. So we're going to do eight division previews for obviously teams in each division. So this way you get an opportunity to not only uh, in that particular report, uh, find out what's going on with your own team, but the teams that you're competing with in your division. So that's coming up a little bit later on as well. Uh, When is your updated rankings coming out, Dave? The updated rankings will be coming out early April. That'll, and that will pretty much be solidified once these pro days are over. No, th- that's an every day, another test part of this process. So especially guys that were not at the scouting combine, um, you know, the draft goes way deeper than the 300 names that were there, you yeah. know, especially from my perspective. But, you know, at the top of the board, you're not going to see a lot of movement. But I think there's a lot of movement still to be had, you know, in those, you know, that bottom third of each position stack. And some of that is – you know, getting the measurements and times from those pro days. So we usually have that all shored up by early April. By the way, uh, how, what kind of percentage of players are taken in the first few rounds of the draft that are not invited to the combine? I mean, the first few rounds, it's almost almost never happens. This year, I do think it's going to happen with Carl Brooks from Bowling Green. I think he's a top 100 pick. Oh, wow. Um, You've already thrown out a name. Carl oh, Brooks yeah, from Carl- Bowling Green. Yes, Bowling Green. I think I think you're going to see, hear that kid's name okay. uh, p- chosen in the first 100 picks. But normally, I mean, you start seeing some of these guys that are not on your combine list right around pick 140, 150. You're talking about round four, round five. Um, and this year, I don't think it's going to be much different other than Carl Brooks. I do have a, few, a list of combine snubs that I'm confident will get drafted. But even those guys, it's usually late day three where that starts to happen. Okay, and the draft guide, when is that going to be available? That should be we're aiming for the third week of April. So you'll have it in your lap before the draft. Absolutely. There's also going to be a PDF version uh, for those that are more new school. I personally love having the hard copy in front of me. There's something about turning the pages. But, you know, our deadlines for the for the uh, draft guide are within a week. And we send it to the printer. And from there, it's kind of out of our hands. But we've been told early April they should be shipping out. So bottom line is, it's just like everything else going on in this country, uh, things are just work they're working at a, at a snail's pace yeah so normally we would probably have the guide out the first week of april but yeah probably you're saying the third week this time around that would say the at, at the latest that's the latest yeah. and uh you know we are we are doing our work you'll see in the team reports for the guide we normally wait till after this wave of free agency is over we, we normally send things in at the end of march but because we're trying to get it to the printer two weeks earlier a lot of our team reports will not include some of the free agency um, occurrences. So, you know, we're going to do our part to just kind of accelerate the process a little bit. But at some point in April, you'll have that guide. Yeah, it's usually it's 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 we, we get about, what, two weeks, probably like 10 days yeah. of free yeah. agency. Yeah. And then it's out of our hands. Right. Right. Yep. OK, so our mock draft uh, for this uh, this video, we're going to change it up. Uh, you had the uh, odd numbers with Mach 1. I'll have the odd numbers for Mach 2, which means uh, I've got the first pick. And uh, we got to talk uh, just a little bit about the Carolina trade. Uh, I just spoke uh, with Rashad Beard from um, 
uh, from you, this YouTube channel. Uh, yeah. So you can always check out uh, the Carolina Panthers uh, YouTube channel. And I always have the notifications. I always have the links to his uh, website on this channel. So you can check that out. And uh, he they do a great job. And Rashad, and, and I'm even getting... Uh, and, and I'm going to tip my hand to the first pick. I'm just getting a feeling talking to Rashad and, 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 and so forth from some of the fans. It's, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking maybe CJ Shroud to Carolina okay. and yeah. uh, Hey, you know what? It's not a major surprise because you just never know. Everybody's got a preference. Yeah. I mean, I think the, not that this matters too much, but the betting favorite right now is CJ Shroud. Uh, the last side checked. And again, no, I always get a little iffy of, on, on putting a lot of credence into that, but you know, that they're, their information is out there for a reason. And I personally have CJ Stroud as my QB one in this class. He's above Bryce young. He's above the freak Anthony Richardson. And when you look at the coaching staff at Carolina, who they like to work with, the kind of quarterbacks that historically they work with Stroud fits the bill. And, you know, you don't put a ton of credence into the combine with how well did quarterbacks perform there. But I do want to say that Stroud looked the best by a landslide. When it came to throwing the football, mechanics, accuracy, um, how repeatable his mechanics were. But, but but I'm not so sure that's a surprise, right? Because no, the thing no. about Bryce is the way that he's able to make plays out of nowhere. Again, right. that's why we compared him and felt it was the best comparison by far to Patrick Mahomes. All those yeah. other comparisons were silly, but he his comparison actually made more sense. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, even if, if this is going to really come down to Stroud versus Bryce Young – the only reason I don't go all in on Stroud is the owner. Uh, the owner has is a very aggressive person by nature. This trade had his name written all over it. And he has publicly said that they need to make the move at quarterback. And they oh, yeah. obviously just did it by trading. But to me, he's an outside-the-box type thinker. And C.J. Stroud is more inside the box, your traditional quarterback, where Bryce Young is very outside the box. You're talking about size metrics that you've never seen high in the draft and you know all that comes with Bryce Young um it, it's I still think there's a shot they're they're going to go in one of the in that direction but if I had to you know lean in one direction I'd say I'm pretty much 65 35 Stroud over Young for that number one pick wouldn't you say though the last quarterback that had some size limitations that ended up being the number one pick that nobody thought was going to be the number one pick was Baker Mayfield until yeah. pretty much the last couple of days. I know our lads had him as the number one, but yeah. for, for like a month or so, but it was like all of a sudden, like within a 48 hour, 24 hour period is like Baker Mayfield could be going to Cleveland. Yeah. And there were those size uh, issues with Baker Mayfield. So I don't know. I wonder whether or not that does scare off uh, some GMs. It, it does. I mean, there's no, there's no questioning that it does and it's normal. I mean, we're, we're talking about, we're not even talking about small. We're talking all time small. I mean, Kyler Murray was even a bigger presence when he was the number one pick to Arizona, just because of how thick and how strong he is. And, you know, Bryce Young, I know he weighed in at 204 at the combine, but that's, that's called what creatine, right? I don't, I don't think that guy plays at 204 and he still has that brittle factor to him that if a pro defensive uh, tackle or pass rusher even gets their fingertips on him, he's going to the ground, right? He's all about escaping contact, yep. not getting through contact. And that's a huge difference. Um, so well, how about make a trade? I mean, you know, and, and again, it, it, it might be in their best uh, interest, though, to talk uh, Bryce Young because maybe they could swing a little bit, uh, maybe a deal with Houston. You know, yeah. if Houston wants Bryce Young, which I think is is that, that's kind of what we are hearing. Yep. And it just, all right, too easy. Stroud one, Bryce Young two. But hey, why not try to, are you sure we're not going to take Bryce? Do you really want him? Even yeah. if they just give you a third round or a second right. round, just get something out of it. Yeah. I mean, you're in the power position. You call the shots now. That's what you get when you gave up what they did to get up to the top of the draft. You call the shots. You are on the clock. You get to make any decision you want here. Um, and if something is put on your table, if something's put on your front door and you get to kind of evaluate and see if it works or not. Uh, but they're not going to be turned away from what they want. They're either going to get the quarterback they want oh, or yeah. they're going to get a trade offer and they're in a good spot. Uh, and uh, DJ Moore going, I think that's the part of the deal that I, I believe angered the fans from Carolina the most mm. was my car uh, conversation with Rashad. Um, but overall, what did you think about the compensation? 
Very fair. And I, I would say Chicago won the, the deal. Um, I mean, if Carolina gets their franchise quarterback that wins a Super Bowl in the next decade, yeah, I mean, you know, it come doesn't on. matter. But I don't. Know, I think it's a wash because it, it, if you get the guy you want to get, then that's right. and, and he's your franchise quarterback, then that's yeah. one of those things we're not going to find out for five or ten years. Right. And just consider again economics. You always have to think about the economics here. If you're getting your quarterback and you get to pay him below market price for the next four to five years, that is such a such a, a feather in the cap of of the decision makers where they get to play around with a lot of extra money to build the rest of the roster. It's not just the quality of the quarterback. It, you know, I mean, teams that are not going after Lamar Jackson right now, no one ever brings up the fact that yes, he's an MVP caliber quarterback, but he is going to eat up 25 to 30% of your cap. Um, and he might be asking for a fully guaranteed contract and you have to give up multiple picks for him. Yeah. Um, it, economics are a part of this process, whether you like it or not. It's not just about, you know, who the player is. Um, even at the quarterback position. So, I mean, th- I, I do know a few teams tried to get up to this spot. There, it was not just Carolina, and that probably upped the price a little bit. But what Chicago wanted in return was that receiver. You know, um, the, the Raiders, they tried to get up. They couldn't. They did not have a receiver that could fit into this trade economically. Um, they have Adams, but he was not on the table. So they didn't have another piece that Chicago and Chicago really wanted that. Yes, they got the draft capital, but now they have – a receiver to work with Justin Fields and Darnell Mooney. You have Chase Claypool last year. You can start to see their, yeah. their how they're kind of manipulating the roster here. Oh, by the way, 100% that Chicago aced the trade. I don't think there's any doubt about that because yeah. they had their quarterback. Right. I think the way to look at the trade is Chicago aced it pretty much. For Carolina, it's just wait and see. Right. And if they if they've got their quarterback and he's their guy for the next ten years, it's it's a win win. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. I don't think you have to look. You don't have to wait for Chicago to have known that they had a. Uh, it was just a beautiful trade. Yep. But wait and see for Carolina. But they got the guy they wanted, and I'm sure they're pretty happy with that. And it yep. looks like it might be C.J. Stroud. And again, that's the reason why I am going to put C.J. Stroud number one. And uh, will you make it simple? Yeah, I'm going to stay simple here. I, I don't see them going for Will Levis. I don't see them going for Anthony oh, Richardson. It, it, yeah. it just doesn't seem like the, the move that this front office and this coaching staff would go after. Um, there's an Alabama connection already with the new head coach. Uh, Bryce Young gets his name handed in here at the number two pick before their, their time is, is yeah. up. Um, the only question you might have is, is there another trade hungry team here that uh, does Indianapolis get nervous about someone trading up into one of these two spots, forcing their hand um, a little bit, but if Houston stays put, we're not doing trades in this mod draft. You have to think Bryce Young is going to be the guy. All right, and then uh, I'm going to make it also simple, uh, just like we, uh, just like you did uh, with Arizona. They desperately need edge rush, edge rush help. So Anderson is definitely the play here. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's another easy pick. Um, and again, I think as you start to see what this team is going to do defensively, schematically, and then also what they're going to be doing in free agency. That's the one spot I think is still going to be wide open for that, for this team to just add a, a supreme talent. And again, at a very cost effective price because of how expensive edge rushers are now. Um, Will Anderson, safe pick, still thinks he's going to have to clean up at the next level, but there's no denying he's the top edge rusher in this class. And there's no denying it's probably their top need heading into the draft. And by the way, Arizona does have uh, quite a bit of uh, activity along that offensive line that yeah. has to get straightened out between now and the draft. So. Yeah. Uh, We'll find out more about that, of course, uh, by the time we do our next mock. Okay, the Colts are next. So based on this scenario, uh, number three and four quarterbacks are still available. So what are you going to do? So it's going to be a quarterback. It's going to be a coin flip between Richardson and Levis. And I believe the owner is going to be very involved in this decision. Uh Uh-oh, that's a bad thing. That is a bad thing. And... um, I don't want any negative PR for our lads and ruffle any feathers with the relationship, but I just <laughs> yeah. think it is a fact that he's going to be involved. And he just based on the way he's been acting in recent years, I think that he's going to be more of a swing for the fence type. Oh. Uh, I think he cares a lot, a lot about the, the publicity, the PR behind the picks, putting fans in the seats. And because of that, I'm going to go with Anthony Richardson, leapfrogging Will Levis as the third quarterback taken in the draft. Okay, now uh, we can talk a little bit about this because this is the thing that I thought was absolutely funny is after the combine workout, which was 
uh, you know, really good. It's like the, the 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 presses were like, "What an amazing combine for for Richardson!" It's like, yeah. Yeah. What did you expect? <laughs> yeah, that's right. that's what he is. Yeah. He is a freak. Uh, yep. As far as the he's a workout freak. He's, he's yep. everything you want. That we did none of that surprises us. And and so you just wonder whether or not though is you know I, I mean especially if it's an owner that is he not smart enough to realize that you know like dude. Don't don't tell me that you didn't really like him before the combine. Please right. don't tell me that. Right, right. Yeah, I mean the combine. It's always my cardinal rule. You can't you can't have anything get swayed by more than a round in the combine unless it's medical based, right? And you know there's a couple instances where that does happen. You know, medicals pop up. But one of the guards actually tore his ACL during the combine. It's going to bump him down. But you know I'm big on you know you have a round grade on someone heading to the draft. And you only have a little, a little bit of plus minus there. They stay within that same round. Quarterbacks, you could say you can jump them up around just because of the value of the position. But I think most even respectable football minds, whether it's the media, coaches, scouts, right? I don't know how many are completely aware how much they do get swayed by the combine, right? There's no football on TV. We're not watching games anymore. Yeah. And it's been a while now, especially with these underclassmen that, you see someone go out, you start creating these scenarios in your head. You start dreaming based on what he can do with his body. And again, it's not just the freakish athleticism. Like the dude can wing it. They, that, sure. that he can sling the football as well as anyone. I actually think he's like a carbon copy of Cam Newton coming out minus the national championship. And just when you look at the size, the speed, but also how easily he can throw the football down the field. Now the accuracy isn't there. The decision-making we're not sure about. Uh, he does not have a lot of experience. I think he has 14 starts under his belt, which is just not enough, in my opinion. That's why I don't put him at the top of the draft. You just need more experience there. Um, <laughs> That's to say. That's to say the least, yeah. Yeah, more experience. and, you know, in this year, I do think there's going to be a market of quarterbacks that can go and take a one-year deal in Indianapolis and just let Richardson sit. But for hit that for that kid's sake, and I like him. I like listening to a talk. I think he's a good kid from what I, what I can gather. Um I hope he doesn't play year one. Oh, That's please no. Please I, no. I hope he can stay on the sideline and just let someone else kind of run that ship for a year. Yeah, that that can't happen, no. Uh, but we'll see. Look, I, I just don't know. And again, if it's Indianapolis, this, this guy's never been a head coach before. He doesn't yep. have like some sort of major track record. You can't tell. I mean, look, we don't know what went on in, in, in Philly and all that kind of stuff. And I, look, there is, you could say, which look, obviously there were good things done. I get that. But it's not like we're talking about Peyton or Andy Reid. And that scares me a little bit because mm-hmm. I just wonder. I mean, he's got to get the right coaching. There's just no yeah. question about it. Yeah. I mean, it's. I, I thought the Ravens did such a good job with this uh, when, when when Lamar was coming in. They built the offense around him. They changed the scheme, the blocking scheme, the personnel in the backfield. It was all about Lamar. And he goes out and wins an MVP, right? Um, was it the best decision for the long term? I'm not sure. You know, we're, we're gonna, remains to be seen. Um, you can make the argument that he hasn't developed from that um, or has not escalated himself from that MVP. But, you know, if, if Indianapolis can follow a template like that where you kind of build the offense around him and maybe do a better job of putting talent around him in the coming years than Baltimore has, um, you can sustain that, that greatness that Lamar had and not put too much pressure on his legs. But, you know, I don't want to compare him to Lamar because they're different players, you know, much different bodies. I really I think Cam Newton when I when I see him and he proved it can work if the system around him is better. But you have to be patient. All right. Uh, next up, we are going to uh, move to Seattle. Now, there, look, there's talk about. I know that Seattle was talking a, a little bit about, well, you know, you got to take advantage of the, uh, and this was, I think, before they even signed Gino. Got to take advantage of the draft position. You know, we, we haven't been in this position in a long time. And you got to think quarterback and so forth and so on. I think that's just smoke and mirrors completely. Right. Uh, that's that's who wants to come up and make some trades with us kind of deal. Um, you don't you don't look at what Gino did with you last year and then give him the money and then go ahead and use that top pick on a quarterback. It's just not going to happen. So that w- could they do it at 20? Maybe it's possible. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that would be a bad idea. Um, but here that's just not going to happen. So um, I tell you what, unless I hear something dramatically different, I think Seattle's got to take advantage of the fact that Jalen Carter is still on the board. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that would he'd be he's especially with with the way Pete Carroll wants to build that defensive line. He's pretty vocal about it. Um, you know, and, and I don't think Pete Carroll cares too much about some of the. I mean, if there again, like you said, if there's something massive that comes out, um, jail time or something like that, which I don't think will be the case. Um, just an unbelievably unfortunate incident. I, I almost feel guilty. Good timing. Football. Yeah, the timing. Just you know, a young, a young kid lost his life on that. Like that's always the most important part of this. Yes. But um, you know, I don't think we're talking about a criminal act by Jim. No, Carter. if this is the only thing that the kid has done wrong, then it's excusable. Because let's be honest, how many of us kids right have Maybe done this down. and have right. not had the bad luck? Mm-hmm. That Jalen, I mean, come on, right. you know, yeah. you could, you could, you could, you could name millions of, of of teenage kids that have been lucky that nothing yeah. has ever happened to them. Absolutely. So you can't pin it. You can't say, oh, he's a bad seed because of it. So right, and and I think in just the way that Carol likes to play football, I mean, I even think it probably boosted Carter's stock a little bit. How he went to the combine, did the interviews, he didn't disappear. He he actually came back. Right, he went. Um, did his due diligence with the police department in, in Athens, and then it came back to the combine. If anything, that kind of showed some maturity on the side that you know it's it's not about just making mistakes; it's how you respond to your mistakes. Agreed. That you make, and I think he kind of passed that test there. And if there is a maturity concern, um, I don't think it's going to have anything to do with what happened in this particular incident. There are some people in the media starting to throw some feelers out that maybe he's not the hardest worker. Um, including some of the guys that I respect a lot in the business. That's um, different. That, yeah. That is a little bit different. That's, yeah. but I don't think that that's a separate issue from, from what yes. we're talking about. All right. Detroit's next. Now I don't think you're taking a tight end here, correct? Yeah. We don't want to get, <laughs> all right. So <laughs> we don't want to get, we don't want to get too much negative feedback. On no, that, but, uh, uh but think- this one thing that I, and I talked to Jeff Risden uh, a week or two ago. And the one thing that the fan base is torn about here, it's quarterback. Mm-hmm. And that's whether or not, you know, again, you get her in this position and how how long term is Jared Goff and, you know, how sexy is that for your future? Um, and then you got Ben Johnson. That's the thing that I think is important to understand here is that I believe most people believe, which I, I agree, that Ben Johnson is probably not going to be with Detroit after 2023. Okay. He's such a hot commodity that he's going to get a head coaching job. I mean, if, 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 if we, the, the kid we just talked about, Steichen, gets a head coaching job, Ben Johnson's going to get one. Yeah. Uh, so what, I bring that up because that's going to be an important decision then for Detroit is do you draft a quarterback at some point early, especially a, a high pick, if you think Ben Johnson ain't going to be around? That's actually it's a great point. When, while I've been thinking about what to do with Detroit, um, both just in general, is that two picks are a big part of the first round, big part of the draft. That's something I that does hasn't even crossed my mind. It's a great way of looking at it. That if your ownership and you know this team is pretty close to contention, meaning I think they're playoff caliber right now. Oh, of course, yes. Um, and you know, you put that team in the playoffs. They're, they have they have enough ability on both sides of the ball to scare anybody. You know, especially if they do get a home game. Um, so I think these, these picks need to be about this year and you're riding with Jared Goff, whether you like it or not, you're riding with him this year and to not know who's going to be coaching your offense in 2024, you almost want to give that guy the benefit of the doubt that you don't even know who it's going to be. You want him to you know, pick that next quarterback yeah. right? or yeah. at least have a say in it. So yes. I, that's a great point. I think that kind of just pushes the coin over and say, Hey, we got to ignore quarterback in this draft, and we have to build the rest of the roster. And we have. To I mean, you can out. take a quarterback a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. second yeah. round, third round, and yeah. hope that he. Oh, look what we got here! Right, get a little lucky there. To yeah, that word yeah. again. Uh, but you know, so but I, who I knows? That, they do have two first round picks, and if they really want Anthony Richardson, they really love him, and they can't. Yeah. They're, they're just they're, they're not going to, uh, to, to or you know, the owners or. And I know the owners are staying out of it because that's that's the reason why actually Detroit's turned the corner in management because they now have a smart management group. But if that group really likes him, then hey, they have the draft. I think they do have the draft ammunition to go up and get Anthony Richardson. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's the one guy that it kind of makes sense if they fall in love with Richardson. You, again, you can let him sit for the year, which is an ideal situation for him. I do think that coaching staff can build around Richardson a little bit, and uh, they kind of brings that smash mouth mentality to the table uh, that you know Dan Campbell's going to want to work with. Um, 
And, you know, he's got the arm that you can do things with when you're talking about what Jameson Williams can do once he gets fully healthy and into that system. He's going to be one of the best vertical threats in football. And you have a quarterback like Richardson that can launch the ball downfield by flicking his wrist. That's the kind of, now you have something that you can really build off of. But, you know, in this scenario, Richardson's off the table. Yep. Um, I, I don't see Will Levis being the option. And based on them moving forward with Goff and trying to take advantage of this playoff caliber roster that's in their grasp right now, they have to get another corner. And they're going to take the, not the top corner in the draft, which I think is now getting solidified, at least from my perspective, now that I'm done watching the defensive tape. Okay. It's Christian, it's Christian Gonzalez from Oregon. Um, I think well, he's he was the, your boy all along. Yeah, he's and it, it's just been even like I had a lot of these guys stacked very close overall. But Gonzalez, his grade is notably head and shoulders above the rest of the corners. And I still like the rest of the corners. I just think this kid's a top five player in the draft. And yet again, Detroit gets another solid value, a guy that is probably picked at, at, at a spot that is higher than where the player actually is. You know, and, I think that. No, I was going to say, so, and so, you, so do, do you think this is consensus? I do. The, the only name that I could see – Contending with Gonzalez right now is Witherspoon from Illinois okay. because of the fact that he's still earlier on the progression curve than Gonzalez. I mean, this kid was barely recruited out of high school. He didn't play until I think his sophomore, junior year of high school, Witherspoon, and barely got recruited by Illinois, did not join the roster until I think August of 2019. And then all of a sudden, everyone's turning their heads like, dude, this kid's got real talent. He got coached up. Um, you know, I think the one – Thing, the one dent in his armor that Gonzalez does not have is you're not completely sure about the long speed. And if you're going to take a corner at the top of the draft, you got to be able to hang with the fastest of the NFL receivers on an island on the outside. It's, in my opinion, that's you can't be considered a top notch corner without that. So that's why I have Gonzalez notably ahead of Witherspoon when you're talking about an overall grade. All right. Uh, next up is Las Vegas. And lo and behold, I'm looking at the depth chart at our lads and I see Jimmy Garoppolo there. So that's happened pretty quickly. Ooh. Wow. So uh, I'll tell you what, not to toot our harms, I have not, I have no involvement in this, but um, the guys at our lads, I think, get it before some others. And it's um, what we don't, we're not a news source. We don't. So if anyone's looking for some information on T on players that is not yet out in public, I would keep scoping. I mean, right now I'm looking at uh, Detroit, Cameron Sutton, Nickelback is, is in Detroit right now. And I haven't seen that publicized yet. And he's okay. probably the top nickel on the market. So you talk about the scenario we just did. We bring Gonzalez into the picture with the pick and Cameron Sutton at nickel. You're talking about something potentially special there in Detroit in that secondary. So okay. Jimmy G, Raiders quarterback. Jimmy G. Yeah, I just typed it up on uh, Google and it says uh, fifth, eight minutes ago, Raiders fill quarterback need with Jimmy Garoppolo. Sources say. Okay, so, so we and, and we've already got Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, it, 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 he's not even signed the, the dotted line, and he's on uh, he's on the quarterback spot for the Raiders here at Arlad. So, and I do think that 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 is going to uh, play an impact on what the Raiders do at quarterback because Garoppolo, if he stays healthy, we know that is the only issue with him at this point in time in his career. So, I don't think you can spend the seventh pick of the draft on a guy that you're just not sure of. Look, if they if 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 McDaniel's just loves. Richardson or Levis, and oh, I just oh, if I can get one of those two guys, I'm that's what I need, and I, I can do it both with these guys. Then okay, I mean, I don't know, but I just don't think that's the way they're going to go now that they've got Garoppolo here. I think if Garoppolo wasn't here, of course I have to put Levis in there. But with Garoppolo now with the Raiders, I think there's a few other needs, including they have no doubt cornerback is is very high on the list. But um, I'm going to go ahead and say because right now. It's early, and for, we don't even hit free agency. They have major needs on the right side of the offensive line, and I think they can kind of solidify that with one pick, and that would be Skaronsky. Uh So that's uh, who I'm going to go with. Peter Skaronsky, love it. What do you think about that situation there? Do you agree with <laughs> I, me I, on, I, uh, on Levis, or do you think they still go after him? No, I think they look past quarterback. I, I agree with you. Uh, McDaniels, I, I don't think he wants to groom a new quarterback right now, and I can't see them using – their top two resources, which right now is, you know, $25 million for Jimmy G and also a top 10 pick on the same exact position Yep. in a division where, I mean, if you don't go <laughs> for it, you're, you're going to end up with five wins looking for, I mean, that is just a nasty division. I mean, I don't even know if I would take a, take a job in that division because of, of how hard it is going to be to win there. Um, so 
I, I like Skaronsky. I, I think that McDaniels knows that if they don't fix the offensive line with an immobile quarterback, Jimmy G will not work. Part of the reason why Jimmy G has had success in the NFL is that the system in front of him, the group, the offensive line, kept him clean. It did not force him off schedule. That's where he gets into trouble. So, And then it's also the next part of it, which we will see probably them build throughout the rest of the offseason and maybe even in the draft. They need to get guys that are a little bit better after the catch. Yard after catch for Jimmy G is is a huge reason why he was productive. So this is part one. Solidify what you have up front. This also kind of coincides with then uh, franchising Jacobs and uh, maintain and let him do his thing from the backfield. That you have to own the point of attack with a yep. strong run game. And I, I think it's an excellent pick. All right. Uh, next up, Atlanta. So uh, you've got the Falcons. They have a new coordinator. Speaking to Kevin Knight from the Falcoholic, uh, he says uh, it, it looks like um, they're going to keep uh, the three-four alignment. Yeah. Um, but he said that they are expected to switch more to man coverage as mm-hmm. opposed to the zone coverage from Dean Pease. Uh, that's about uh, that's about it from. Uh, little bit of perspective on, on, on how that might impact what they do as far as the draft on defense, because defense is definitely uh, going to be a big part of what they do this off season. Right. I, I think I'm going to lean defense here and I'm between two guys, two positions. I have them graded pretty equally um, that I think they need, they did put some resources into their edge, uh, edge rushers last year. I'm not sure how happy they are with the likes of D'Angelo Malone and uh, e- uh, the kid from Penn State last year. The Bikini, uh, yep. Yeah. And is he, are those highlight not, pass rushers? They're not. They're not. No, they're not. They're not. So here's the question, right? Are those guys, because I'm on the same page as you, are those guys that prevent you from taking another edge rusher that you feel so. could be special? Yeah. I agree with you. Um, I think those guys would be great accessory pieces, maybe yeah. number two, number three guys, rotational. So I think they're going to put another premium resource into that spot right here. And it's going to come down to one of two guys. It's going to come down to Tyree Wilson from Texas Tech or Miles Murphy from Clemson. Um, I did a lot of studying on both of them. I know publicly, again, I try as hard as I can to stay away from public opinion um, because I don't want it to sway what I'm doing. But a lot of people are on the Tyree Wilson train, and yes. I'm just not there. I'm not there yet. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to stick with Miles Murphy being the second best edge rusher in this class. Really? Okay. I, I, I've Why is that? Mur- tell, tell me the difference between the two. Of course, again, yeah, most people believe Wilson is uh, is the guy. Yeah, the I mean stiffness. Guy. You know, there's some lateral stiffness, some bend issues, and I thought that he got away with it at Texas Tech because he is a physically dominant force. But I don't think he's going to get that kind of push, that kind of power impact. So we're talking about a guy that's not going to win a lot of ed- uh, battles just as a pure speed edge guy. So I think he's going to be a little bit more predictable uh, as an inside shoulder pass rusher, and he'll have success there. I have a first round grade on him, but I think Miles Murphy gives you a little bit more of that pure speed and burst on the outside. Six five, two sixty five, um, excellent jumper. I, I just think that he, what he lacks is a plan. He gets out of his stance and just tries to outmove you. There isn't a lot of technique behind his game, okay. but if he can learn some of that handwork and. They can bring him along slowly, which I think they can in this scenario. I don't think they're going to put him into the fire right away as a number one guy. Uh, I, I think Murphy's upside is is closer to Will Anderson than it is Tyree Wilson. If that and makes sense. is do you believe is is that a consensus or do you think that you're you you like Murphy more than most? I think I like Murphy more than most, and if I think if I'm reading the tea leaves right, I think Tyree Wilson is more consensus than Miles Murphy. Okay, but. I, I just I, I think the twitch is is not, noticeably different, and I like twitch more than power um, when you're talking about the edge. Okay, all right. So next up is Chicago, and Chicago could be right in that same situation, edge rush, and they could be like, all right, whoever you pick, we'll pick the other guy, uh, if that's the way it goes. So I think Wilson's on the board. I also think that uh, cornerback is is definitely you know Vildor's got to be replaced. Um, and they also need a right tackle. So those are the so. I, but the way I'm looking at it, and so th- it, it it is tough because it's like all right, you went out, you got DJ Moore, like we talked about, and I, I'm wondering about David Montgomery. I still believe that they're going to resign him. I just I cannot believe that they did not trade him at the deadline to 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 not resign him. So I think mm-hmm. they'll do that, which means 
that they really just have one big position. Even though there's other offensive line issues, no question that they got to upgrade. But right tackle is just a, a big one. And you just wonder, do they just say to themselves, well, look, we just have to solidify our offense in one offseason. We'll take care of the defense in the next. And we've got all these other picks and we could do it next season or not. I guess it depends on how how much they value, whether Skaronsky is still there or Broderick Jones or Patrick or, or, or Paris Johnson. If they believe that those guys are too good to pass up there. I could see the, those guys going. And I think talent wise, if we're just saying, look, they, they need a right tackle. They need an edge guy. They need a corner. And they also need a defensive tackle, but uh, th- it's too high in my list right now. So let's say right tackle, edge, corner. The question then becomes, which one's the best player? Mm. And is there a guy at, at, in those three groups, right tackle, edge, corner, that you think is clearly better than the other that's still on our board? Or do you think it's, a, it's, pretty, it's all pretty close? I, I would I would lean towards Witherspoon, the corner from Illinois, being the best player there. Okay. Um, I boosted Broderick Jones, the tackle from Georgia, up a little bit. I think he makes a lot of sense for the Bears. Um, you know, the athleticism and, and twitch there, he screams left tackle. I think he, he'll you know, obviously have to move to the right side, which he has some experience at. So I think it comes down to one of those two guys. And if this offseason is all about supporting Justin Fields and making sure yeah. he does not go through what he went through last year yeah. and maximizing his talent I while agree. he's on a rookie contract, I think they lean offensive line here. That's what we'll do then. So let's go ahead. And do you think now, who do you think is graded right now? I know you like Broderick Jones a lot. He's, he's yeah. he really climbed up the boards in your mind. So yep. is he clearly the number two guy? I think so. Uh, do you think, think he could be it, number one? I do. Um, is I do think some teams are going to be scared off by Skaronsky's lack of length. Um, you know, and again, paralysis by analysis, the guy can block. He'll block fine at the next level. But some teams – they have very specific requirements for the outside. And I, I'm on record saying I would draft Skaronsky even if I was putting that guard. So yeah. that doesn't sway his offensive line grade to me. The guy is the best offensive lineman in the draft. That won't change no matter what position you put him in. Um, but if you're talking about who has the highest upside at tackle, it's, it's for Derek Jones. And I think some guys are going to have him as the top guy too. Makes sense. All right, so yep. Jones is the pick for the Bears. Next up. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. And- I mean, two names that yeah, two names that you were talking about here. It comes down to, I mean, Philly is going to be doing cartwheels that they have Tyree Wilson and Devin Weatherspoon uh, put in front of them right here. Um, you know, which one do they choose? Now, uh, based on historic trends, I always think they're going to go for for the defensive lineman. Yeah. But they did just bring back Brandon Graham. They did lose Javon Hargrave. I think they'll look for an interior player at some point with one of their first few picks on the defensive line. But I don't think at this point they can they can overlook Weatherspoon. Um, he's one of the top 10 players in the draft to get him at number 11 at a spot that that's the one spot on this team based on what they're saying about Darius Slay, James Bar- Bradbury probably leaving. That's a spot that could become a weakness on this team sooner than later. And I think they're going to try to hedge against that possibility and take Weatherspoon. And this is an example, by the way, of why uh, unless – you're just uh, this. You got this foundation for years. Why you have to take advantage of winning a Super Bowl when you can? Because yeah. the Eagles had everything going for them last year. They didn't have any injuries. They had all the right contracts and all the right. You know, this is these guys are the last year, and we're not gonna. You know, we're gonna lose like seven or eight key guys from this team. And they, they just couldn't get it done. And that doesn't mean that they, they're they not going to be dangerous next year. It's just that you do wonder whether or not if they have injuries, they're not going to have as much depth. You have to got to win that Super Bowl when you get the opportunity. So, Agreed. all right. Uh, Tennessee's next. And uh, wow. So this is a team that needs a quarterback. And um, yeah, they need a left tackle. They need a guard. They need edge rush help. They need a corner. But I'm not going to uh, pussyfoot around this one. They, they, if Levis is available, which I don't think he will be, but if he is, they got to take him. So will Levis to Tennessee, that's what we're saying? Correct. Okay. Love it. And by the way, if they don't yeah. go quarterback and again, because I think all the, all, they will be gone. So let's say they're all gone. Like I said, I think they need offensive line help. Uh, they need an edge. Maybe uh, Wilson, if he's available, or if not, and your guy's available, Murphy, and they need yep. a corner. So what do you right. think? What do you think would be uh, if quarterback is not there? What 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 is your biggest need for Tennessee? 
Offensive line. I mean, they're they're. I don't know what they're going to be doing with Nate Davis. I thought he was the best offensive lineman, and I thought they would have locked him in by now. Um, I'm trying to get a live update right now if there's any news on him, but he might be the top guard in the market if he hits it. They lose Luan at left tackle. Um, they just released the center Jones, I believe. Like you're you're talking about multiple vacancies available on this offensive line and on a team that is still built to run the football. Yeah. Right. And I mean, again, if you have that again, run, run, run offensive linemen with running, uh, with with run blocking offensive linemen is not as hard to find. Correct. Absolutely. Um, So I I would even think just like Osiris Torrance just kind of fits that, that what they want to do up front. And I, I do think that's where they look first defensively. I could see them trending in the right direction. Um, especially if how, how Landry comes back from his torn ACL that made him miss all of last year. If they can get kind of bat- him back to where he was, um, they have a lot of pieces on that side of the ball to be your old school Titans team where you just pound the run, try to prevent the other team from scoring, and maybe you just try to piece together the quarterback situation with Ryan Tannehill or, like we said earlier with the Lions, use a day two pick on someone. Yeah. And well, they might have to, yeah, because uh, the chances are Levis won't be here. You yeah, know, you, you would think. Maybe who knows? Maybe a tend to see that moves up, but somebody yep. is more than likely. You would think Richardson is going to go what top five? You think? I think so. Yeah. Uh, so that yeah, means I mean, Levis, look, he's got to go in the top ten. You would think. Yeah. If I think there's going to be four quarterbacks taken in the top ten, yeah. and you know the way we're doing our mock draft, mm-hmm. we're not trading around. Yeah. Um, he's here. He is sitting on the outside looking in, but um, when all said and done, I think that. You're going to see four guys go in the top 10 once the trades start getting involved. All right. Houston is next. So the Houston Texans, and they can use a whole lot of help. Yep. I mean, you could just, you know, put a blindfold on and go <laughs> pick a, a player on the draft board, and it's going to work out. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think Houston is going to – it's an organization that understands, just looking at the coaching staff, where these guys are coming from, where the guys in the front office are coming from. They understand the value of the game-breaking tight end. And this is where I think we see the first tight end come off the board. Um, Again, still a mess. I mean, excellent tight end class. It is a mess on the the top of the stacks in terms of who to put one, who to put two, who to put three. Uh, Yeah, that's why this is going to be interesting because it's going to be – it's such a good class and it's such a deep class that you just wonder whether or not – you know how when when you have that situation, it's like, well, do I take this guy or because it's so deep, I should wait. So you're yeah. going to have that intro. Who's going to be the first one to bite? Yeah, so. I think it's going to be Houston. And, you know, I'm going back and forth between Kincaid and Musgrave. In, in my, I even think Darnell Washington, just with what he did at the combine and how rare of a blend of talent and tools that he has and how much of a factor he will be in the running game. Um, that, that Those are the two things that – those are the three guys that I'm really considering for the number one tight end spot. But I'm going to just go with the guy that I've had at the top since the beginning, and it's Salton Kincaid from Utah. All right. Yeah, I think that's the smart, like you said, you know, just go with it. Why not? Yeah. Go with what uh, your gut told you initially, and he's going to be such a, a difference maker. He, he could be the next Travis Kelsey. So. Yep. All right. Jets are next, and unfortunately, I already know that when I go to the Jets depth chart here to talk, unlike the Raiders when they had Garoppolo, I'm not going to see Aaron <laughs> Rodgers' name there yet. Uh, what, are you, what real quick? What are your what What are you thinking right now with that entire situation? I am. We're at a point now. Like I was so busy last week with work. Yeah. Just like you, you know, you get so yep. busy and you just. But then you you hear these news reports coming out, and it's like, oh, yeah, it's like in. it's it's real. They're, they're flying in to talk to them, and and then and then everybody else is gone, and cars in New Orleans, and and now Garoppolo's uh, <laughs> uh, in in Las Vegas, and it's like, well. It's really either at this point, I think it's going to be either does Rodgers want to retire or is Rodgers going to get traded to the Jets? I don't think Rodgers right. is going to go, no, nah, I don't want to go to the Jets. Trade me somewhere else. I just, I right. don't think that's going to happen. So, um, yeah, I think this is going to get done. I just would be shocked if it doesn't. So, uh, where am I at? Yeah, um, I'm at that point now where I'm, uh, unfortunately, uh, because I had the whole weekend. It's like, and you know, nothing's going to happen over the weekend. It's right. like, I just, I, I can't think about it because uh, I, I just, just please tell me the news. And you know what? If it's no, if it's not good news, then please tell me the news. I want to, yeah. I want to just, do, you're going to do it or not. Rip um, the bandaid off. Yes. And I, and I, and, and yeah, but bottom line is, I will tell you this when I heard uh car, uh, when I heard that he was thinking that, that ridiculous report and maybe it was put out there. 
on purpose about how he was leaning towards the Jets, right. I got scared, really okay. scared. I was like, no, 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 please, no, that can't be true. Don't do it, please, no. <laughs> and then when I heard that he signed with the Saints, I was so overjoyed. I was like, oh, because that yeah. is a major decision. That, that's that's, like, that's going to be your that's quarterback. That's a multiple-year decision, too. Yes. That's a multi-year decision. Yeah. And look, I just uh, – so, yeah. So, I was just very pumped that Carr decided to go elsewhere. So, yeah, I'm uh, I'm all in on Aaron Rodgers. And, by the way, I spoke with um, uh, Matt O'Leary, who does a good job. He's got a channel on YouTube, and he uh, – Jet Channel. And he believes that the Jets are not going to have to give up their first-round draft pick to get Aaron okay. Rodgers because of the money situation, which I agree. There's no no doubt in the negotiations, the Jets are going to be like, well, we don't have to give you uh, the Russell Wilson package because you got all this money that you're going to come off your books and it's going to be a big help for you. Um, so so I get that. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd be a little, I don't know. I'm still a little bit, uh, do, do you do you believe that they're going to, they stay, have at, to at least give up that first round draft pick? I mean, when you talk about just classic old school negotiation, who the Jets have the power. And I think because of that, you're going to have the upper hand, just like the Dolphins had the power in the negotiation over the Rams for Jalen Ramsey. I mean, the, what, what the Dolphins had to give up to put Jalen Ramsey into that defense with Xavier Howard, what was a, was a third and, and Hunter Long, a backup tight end? Something like that, yeah. You know, it, that was not the true value of Jalen Ramsey, but the fi- the financials were a part of it. Everyone knew that the Rams had to get rid of him. So everyone knows the Packers had to get rid of him. I think a lot of teams don't want to deal with Rodgers and, and the drama behind it. That the Jets, maybe the reason why this hasn't happened yet is that the Jets are not going to budge on giving up that first rounder. And Well, you know, it might be the case, even, but I have, I mean, we, heard, we have heard the reports right. that say a deal is in place. Right. Okay. But all Aaron Rodgers has to do right now is make up his mind. The second Aaron right. Rodgers decide if, decides he wants to go to the Jets, the deal will be signed and everybody's ready. So they mm-hmm. have said that part. Now, again, who knows? A lot of this could have been going on, what you're saying, a lot of it could have been going on last week as far yeah. as all of this back and forth. And they finally came to, a, to an agreement. Um, so I don't think that changes that. But yeah, as far as the timing is concerned, that's what is being said is that right. – we're just waiting on Aaron Rodgers to make up his mind. Yeah. So, which sounds like I think I just read an update recently that I don't know what this means. He said his decision is coming soon. So, it has I to. think you're gonna, you're gonna. Have I'd be surprised if it didn't come today. Yeah, the next 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. It has to. So, uh, but anyway, uh, so if the Jets do have this pick, um, and that's going to be a big deal if they can get Aaron Rodgers and still hold on to this pick. And by the way, and I'm going to say this quite a bit between now and the start of the season, if Aaron Rodgers is traded to the Jets and they still, which I can't see any reason why they wouldn't, they still have Zach Wilson, that to me it's an absolute grand slam deal because now you have the absolute best thing to ever happen to Zach Wilson is to have Aaron Rodgers and a coordinator he likes to look up to and to learn from and that if Aaron Rodgers is only there a year or two, you might have your quarterback sitting and waiting has done all the learning and all of the, the maturing off the bench. And then once Rodgers leave, you can go right to Zach and he can hopefully resurrect, uh, you know, his career. I, this could not be the best. This could not have happened any better for Zach Wilson. So that's the reason I think it's a home run deal for the Jets. And I think that's what they're thinking of as well. They know the relationship between Zach and Aaron. And I think this is yeah. just a perfect marriage to hopefully – you don't use a second-round pick in the draft two years prior and think that you're just going to give up on the kid that quickly. This is the way that you're going to save him and hopefully win a Super Bowl with a veteran quarterback in the meantime. So, I agree. It's, it's a long-term move as much as it is about 2024 uh, – 2023, sorry. So – I agree with you that there's a lot of reasons why the Jets need to do this. Uh, so if uh, if they still have the first round pick, um, you look at what they need. I still think they need offensive line depth. Now the problem is is that uh, look they like Max Mitchell. They resigned Brown. They're still hopeful on Becton. But as uh, Matt told me, and I, I agree with him, is that. Um, they had all the injuries and look where it left them. So you can just look at a board and think that all these guys are going to be there, but if they're not, you're back where you were last year. And I still think offensive line is going to be a big deal for them. And and, and specifically offensive tackle, if they're thinking about it at this, at this spot on defense, I'm going to say this. And I know branch, uh, uh, I mean, um, Clark 
was picked up. Great deal to pick up Chuck Clark for a seventh round draft pick. Love that. Uh, I still, I don't think that changes the fact that they need a hybrid kind of guy. And I think this would be a perfect spot for Brian Branch. Perfect. Love that. I mean, I was, you know, just going through who we still have available on this thing. That was the name that just like, he's a top 10, he's still a top 10 player for me on my board. And with what the Jets do on defense, with what the Niners used to do when, when Sala was there, Branch is an ideal fit for what they need and both what they do on the defensive side of the ball. There's so many different things you could do with them. Yes. They need one of those guys in the middle of that defense or really just anywhere to tell you the truth. They need, they need playmakers in that back seven. They yeah. also need edge rushers, but Branch is a much better player than any of the edge rushers that are left on the board. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up is the uh, New England Patriots. Uh, what are you going to do? So I'm going to stick with my, my gut on this one. You said go with your gut. Um, with what I think Jacoby Myers is going to leave in free agency. Yeah. And I think it opens up a spot on that wide receiver core that they very much need. Um, it's not the fastest. It's not the biggest. But New England knows the value of a, of a true slot. And I'm going to go with Jackson Smith and Jigba as being the first receiver taken off the board. And it's funny that the name that I have, I'm trying to do better with comparisons to create, not because of why, where I think these guys are going to end up with their NFL career, but I'm trying to come up with physical profiles that players compare to from the past that can create a clearer picture in the uh, in the eyes of readers okay. of, and fans of saying, hey, Oh, so that's the body type. That's the role he can play in. That's the kind of movement traits. And Julian Edelman is the name that comes up when I when I had Smith and Jigbo. When I really? drove into my system. I wouldn't think I wouldn't think of that comparison, but yeah, great. Yeah. Okay. It, it's a, I mean, and his short area movement, I mean, this we didn't get to talk about this because we didn't do the combine talk yet. His short area movement, three cone short shuttle, is all time great. And that shows up on tape. You're talking about times that are probably, if you combine those two and make them one time or top 10 of all time at, at the combine. Wow. And we all get infatuated with the, the 40 times, which yes. in, some, in most situations that doesn't really produce a lot of value at the next level. It does produce some. It does matter. That's why they run it. But for a slot receiver that specializes in route running and yard after catch ability, which is what his game is completely built on, his athletic ability in that department is – elite it is top shelf and i think it's exactly what new england would like to get matt jones to work with as an underneath like he this guy is going to be a third and six you know just get him the ball at some point you are going to get a first down he's going to be that kind of guy so 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 it sounds like to me that he is one of the top slot prospects yes. to come yes. out in a long time Yep. Okay. Yeah, he, he will be – I mean, if, if I, I'll have to go back and just confirm that, but I don't think I have a slot only that graded this high in recent memory. Okay. Well, and uh, that is going to really be a big deal, no question, for a team like the Patriots that need wide, wide receiver help. Uh, yeah. By the way, the other position that really is a big need for them is right tackle. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's another thing to keep an eye on uh, would be right tackle. Okay. Yep. Uh, next up, the Green Bay Packers – and uh, and again, if uh, if a deal is made with the Jets and they are able to get a first rounder out of the Jets, then they could have two picks pretty close to each other, which would be pretty handy, no question. But if not, if they just sit here with fifteen, and you know what, this is this is this would be interesting. If I if I was uh, Gunkus, uh, I would I would try to at least go. Uh, well, can we you know we'll swap? Yeah, I, that's what actually what I was thinking. I almost responded. I almost kind of gave you that thought when you were talking about would they give a first round pick or not i think a simple swap is maybe even the part start of it. yeah it's a part swap and then you know more picks but hey if the jets can hold on to their first yeah, that would yeah. be, that'd be a, a win for them yeah all right so if uh so as far as green bay i think left tackle tight end uh and uh corner safety uh, this would be a good spot for branch too if, if he was still available um but I'm looking at definitely, uh, again, they need a corner, no question, because Stokes just has not worked out. Uh, safety, I'm not going to go there at this point with Branch off the board. Uh, tight end, uh, yes, no question. That is definitely a big uh, a big possibility. And then, like I said, left tackle. Even though they have Bakhtiari another year, I guess it looks like. So I'm not so sure they have to worry about that in the first round. But, hey, that's up to them. Um, I'm going to go, though, with uh, – uh, I, I'm going to go with corner. Um, 
And looking at the corner situation right now, uh, we have Witherspoon and Gonzalez down. Uh, I know that you did not like uh, Ringo's combine. Mm. Uh, and uh, a few guys uh, uh, moved up the boards uh, on, and, and as far as the combine was concerned on your behalf. Banks and Brents. Uh, who is right now the number three corner? Is it is it uh, definitely there once you get past Gonzalez and Witherspoon? I, I have Porter as my number three, but Ringo is close behind. I mean, Ringo, what I didn't like about the combine, he, still, he ran great. He measured in great. Uh, well, I shouldn't say it, the length wasn't there. His height was there. The weight was there. Um, it's just some of the some of the high hit movement, the struggle to transition. I think he's going to get him into a little bit of trouble. He's going to have to be protected to not have to do too much um, short to intermediate. But I have Porter slightly above him. And, but this is kind of like a cluster of corners where I think they're going to run in our mock draft right now between Porter, Ringo, and Banks. Kind of just like the, that one, two, three combo right there. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and do Porter. And the reason I'm going to do Porter is because of the fact that they didn't have luck, luck with Stokes. Okay. I think that's going to be a little bit of a psychological kind of barrier that they're going to they're gonna pass on. So I'm going to go yeah. ahead. Again, it could I'm be excited. anybody. I'm excited about Porter's upside. Uh, I really am. I think that he's a little bit more raw than some of these other guys. I feel the same way about Deontay Banks. Uh, but, you know, you talk about that, that. He has rare length, great height. The football lineage does help. Um, he just has to clean up some of the issues with his footwork and stop getting so grabby. Yes. But he's got the athletic ability, and he's bendy. He can change direction. Uh, I think he's pretty early on the progression curve. I think his upside is is up there with the top two corners in the class. And with love at quarterback, I mean, yeah, quarterback, I just, you know, I, it's going to depend on how much they feel he is going to be, that a tight end is going to be a big part of what Jordan Love needs. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know. I mean, you know, uh, what do you think? Do you think that based on what you've seen from Love, that he's a guy that, can really use a tight end in his offense, or do you think it's going to be more important to, for him to stretch the field? That's a tough call just because there's so much unknown with him. Because uh, Kincaid is he, really the only tight end that can help you stretch the field, to tell you the truth, really. Right. Well, Musgrave has the speed. Um, okay. I think Musgrave, Musgrave can stretch the field. I mean, he's a, he's a credible 4-5, four, 4-6 four, guy, and that's right where Kincaid is. I mean, Kincaid has better tape. Musgrave did not play a lot in college. Yeah, um, okay. One of the negatives I have on him, so there's some unknown there. Uh, but... I do think he could use a tight end. I think being in that Green Bay system for the past three years, I mean, those guys know the answer of whether or not oh, they're. Yeah. No question. Uh, we don't. We we don't because we don't watch practice. Yeah. But just being in that offensive system and watching how Rodgers has used the tight end, um, they haven't had the most talent there. Uh, but um, I, I do think that a tight end will be an asset. They have to. It's Jordan point. led yeah. offense. Yeah. yeah. So the question yeah. is, is because uh, it's possible, you know, the first tight end could could be available for them. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely could be. Yeah. 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 Okay. Washington and uh, Eric B enemy is now part of Washington staff. So yeah. you have Jack Del Rio and Ron Rivera and Eric B enemy. That's your trio. So what do you think about what the big need is for, for Washington? Because no quarterbacks are going to be available. That's for sure. When they go, yeah. we don't have any idea how high they really are on Sam Howell to give him a chance. I uh, think they're not going to have a choice. Uh, probably not. <laughs> So uh, what do you do? So I had tackle as the top need, and I'm just seeing on the R Lads that chart, shout out. Oh, yes, signed, I can see it right there too, yes. They signed uh, Andrew Wiley from KC, who yes. is one of the most overlooked offensive linemen in football. And I think um, I haven't seen what the contract is, but everyone that I know that I look up to with offensive line opinions speak volumes about this guy. So I think this comes down to two things, and – I'm going to, I'm going to turn, I was going to take Ringo, the corner from Georgia. I think he fits the Del Rio scheme, but I'm going to uh, take him out. And just because of the enemy and look, we already have the Casey influence with this decision with Andrew Wiley starting right tackle. Yes. I think they're going to try to get their version of Travis Kelsey for this offense. And I think they're going to go with Luke Musgrave, the tight end from Oregon state. Ooh, okay. I like it. Little tight end action. So, yeah, and, so you know, we're, we're it's, answering it's, hate, that question, by the way, about, about how quickly you go for the tight ends. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I hate um, putting anyone in Travis Kelsey. I mean, Kelsey is on an all-time best of best tight end of all time yeah. trajectory right now, and I, I'm not saying Luke Musgrave fits that mold, but he is one of very few that has the height, the weight, and the speed. And if you do have some time and you want to compare this, right, for anyone that's watching, go watch some of Travis Kelsey's tape at Cincinnati. 
and watch Luke Musgrave's tape. It's limited. He didn't play that much at Oregon State. They are very similar athletes. Wow. Now, there's more to Travis Kelsey's game than the athletic side. Uh, he's unbelievably skillful, um, smart, tough. Um, but Musgrave, if you're, if you're just going to talk about the physical profile, there are similarities. Yeah, here. yeah, no. That, that, so yeah, and, and that does, like you're saying, he is more similar. Just even looking at him, yeah. than Kincaid is. Kincaid's yep. a different type of tight end. Um, but absolutely, yeah. I mean, I was kind of comparing Kincaid because how tough he is. You know, right? And, yeah, uh, he is. But yeah. he's a yard. After, he's a yard after catch guy too. All right. So Pitt. Oh, by the way, it is interesting when you're looking at the the R Leds depth chart of Washington that there's like one free agent on their <laughs> yeah. 22. One. Yeah. Yeah. So that one, that's, yeah. that's 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 uh, that could be good. You know, yeah. if you got the right guys in place. Yep. So I mean, chem- chemistry and just repetitive and guys knowing each other, it does mean something in the NFL. There's so much movement with rosters, but. That, that is often the case, especially with the lines, defense and offensive line. If these guys have chemistry and they can feed off each other, it will create a, um, you know, something bigger than the sum of the parts. You know, I, I think that's, you know, locking up Deron Payne for a long-term deal. They're bringing back Sweat, Allen, Chase Young. I mean, I'm a Giants fan. That defensive line still scares the crap out of me when I see those names on there, you know. So I think they're doing it the right way, but it's going to come down to the quarterback, as always. All right. Pittsburgh is next. And look, it's uh, again, you're looking at offensive tackle. You're looking at uh, they need an inside linebacker and they also need a corner and a safety, especially if Edmonds doesn't come back. So um, corner would make a lot of sense. You look at Porter was still available. I'm sure everybody's yeah. going to be going Porter to Pittsburgh. That's for sure. I think, that's we, did that. I think we did that last time, if I remember correctly. Let me I see. think. No, we didn't. We had Brett Eric Jones there okay, last there time. Yeah, so Jones that. could definitely be again, or, or Paris Johnson is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little Pittsburgh Steeler drafting, and I'm going to say, nah, you know, they, they, I know that they should they should definitely start drafting some first rounders again on offensive line. That's been the problem, but I am going to go. You know what? You talk about the perfect Pittsburgh Steeler inside linebacker from Iowa. Jack Campbell, wouldn't he be go a back, Pits- wouldn't he be a perfect Pittsburgh Steeler? He would. I mean, he looks good in, in black and gold. That's so right. There you go. He's already got the colors. He's got that down already. And yeah, I mean, the Steelers. Right. I still remember one of the most baffled I've ever been in the draft in recent years is when the Steelers made that aggressive trade up for Devin Bush. It yeah. just was not. It just was not a Steeler type move to me. Um, and he's not a Steeler type linebacker. I mean, he's physical. I mean, he and he still is, but that and he had a great start to his career. He got hurt and then he really kind of just fell out of favor there. And you know, he'll be playing elsewhere. But Jack Campbell kind of brings you back to what this team really wants at that position. And I think he's actually a really good compliment to Miles Jack, who will be there for another year. Love the pick. It's outside the box, but I love it. Yeah, that's 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 what I figured I'd do. But yeah, otherwise, uh, offensive tackle makes a whole lot of sense. We could definitely end and with the board looking the way that it is, Paris Johnson might fit in there uh, really well for Pittsburgh uh, too, and uh, and they could go with another one of these corners. And again, if Porter's on the board, I doubt I would be seriously surprised if they didn't take Porter if he was available. So, mm-hmm. all right, uh, Detroit, you get Detroit again. Yeah, I got Detroit again. I'm looking at the tight ends, everyone. Don't freak out. Uh, <laughs> the, Why not? It's time, um, isn't it? It, it it's 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 on the it's on the list. I have two guys that I'm looking at. They're both on the offensive side. We already gave them the corner. We just established that they tra- uh, they signed the best nickel corner in free agency. So I think they're going to be okay on that side of the ball. Tyree Wilson is still looking at me. Uh, not the biggest need on that team, but because of how versatile he is and how the fact that he can line up inside on passing downs, um, it was a thought. But I think with the way they want to play football in Detroit. Um, I think they're going to kind of get try to get DeAndre Swift back on track. I think they're going to draft Osiris Torrance, the, the, the guard from Florida, yeah. a week one starter, and just kind of elevate, just keep feeding Absolutely. the monster there. They want to own the line of the uh, point of attack. This is what Philadelphia has done, guys, right? It's almost like, oh, another lineman, another lineman. And then you watch this team play, and it almost looks like it's unfair. They're playing a different brand That's of football right. because they, they never lose at the point of attack. So, I'm going to go with Cyrus Torrance here from Florida. And you know what? A matter of fact is uh, it, it, if either way, they could either go Torrance and if somehow he was gone, they could also go to tackle. 
yeah. because talking to Jeff, you know, he 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 reminded me and, and everybody that that Detroit, I believe it's an NFL high, but they use the uh, third offensive tackle at least eleven percent of the time. He said, "Oh wow!" Okay. So they they use a lot of uh, those types of jumbos, and uh, they could use another offensive tackle too. So that's a possibility, but. Torrance is on the board. He makes a lot more sense because that, that that's definitely a hole at right guard. Got it. All right. Uh, Tampa Bay is next. And I was, yeah, I was going over Tampa Bay and I'm like, man, they can do anything. I mean, yeah. there's like so many different ways Tampa Bay can go. And, yep. and, and the further we go down this list anyway, it's going to be, especially with free agency still upon us, it's, it's going to start to get a little harder to, to put players in specific spots. But yes, I mean, the entire defensive backfield is a mess. That, that, that makes sense. They can use another edge rusher. Uh, they can use some more uh, defensive line help. So there's so many free agents on defense. You just don't know what they're going to do. Uh, yeah. But uh, look, they, they can use an offensive tackle. And and, um, uh, and we just uh, talked about that. Paris Johnson is still on the board. Uh, and the offensive line, when you're just look, looking at overall talent, uh, I guess corner could be up there with what's left on our list. But I got to go with tackle. I, I have okay. to. I just – they got to get better up front. So Paris yep. Johnson Jr. Yeah, and you know what I like about Paris Johnson uh, being picked in the first round? Remember, this kid was a guard until this past season. And That's right, yeah. I don't, you know, and, and Tampa Bay, they might not need a tackle right away, um, you know, but they, they probably will need one within another year or two. Uh, I'm not really sure what they're going to do on the left side, but even if they stay solid on the outside, the interior of that offensive line is what ruined that offense this past year. And if you really wanted to put him kind of like what the Cowboys were going to do with Tyler Smith before Tyron Smith got hurt in preseason last year was – Put the kid at get the kid acclimated to the NFL inside. Let's not yeah, put him that on. Makes the, sense. There are issues with him right now that he was OT one for me for a while, but the more I watched, um, I, I just I don't think he's ready to play tackle right away. But if you put him in guard, you could protect some of those issues and let him physically develop a little further. That maybe he is the left tackle of your future. And the kid from Central Michigan, uh, do, do you think he's? Was he overdrafted, or do you think that he just needed a little time? So you, you, you're you you're not going to say then that – so you don't really believe that he might be part of their future? No, I mean, a future as – maybe not as a starter. I think he, I think he's there. He's locked in for at least another couple of years as maybe a rotational guy or at least a guy that's going to have to earn a spot. That I, I don't look at Gadeke and, and say, all right, he's our starter next year. You come in, you're going to have to beat out Paris Johnson, or maybe even you get a little bit more creative and start both of them at, at some point. I don't know – Shaq Mason is still there, if I believe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, but there are a lot of trade rumors behind him. So I don't know if he's going to be in their picture next year anyway. So you might be starting both those guys, to be honest with you. Um, and so, but I, I love the pick and I love the idea of not putting Paris Johnson yeah, absolutely. at tackle right away. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Seattle, uh, the Seahawks are next. Uh, I, I went with Jalen Carter with pick number five. Uh, so, so. You know, it's possible at some point starting here if they wanted to, you know, add a quarterback. But with the with, nobody's really a solid five. So when you get past the top four, who is going to be the number five guy? Is it a consensus yet? I think it's Hooker. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to surpass him. Do you him, think he's going to get out of the first round? I do. I think Hooker's going to be kind of one of those guys that once the first day round of the draft over, first day, yeah. Everyone's going to start making some calls about potential. And he'll probably be one of the top picks of the sec- of, this, of yeah. the next day. The only yeah. issue with that, though, and I will say, this is what happened with Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. They traded up to the end of the first round, so they can use that. They have that fifth year option at the end of the four year contract. You don't get that if you wait till the second second round. And now, if you draft Hooker, it's possible you're not going to use them at all. Yeah. Um, in 2023, so now you're looking at a three year player that's going to be 26 years old. So it's going to be interesting. I don't think any quarterback is going to pass him on the stack. Okay. But where teams want to go after him, they might want to trade up to the end of the first for him so it gets you that extra year, that fifth-year option. That makes sense. Um, so that, that's just something to keep an yeah. eye on draft night. Okay? okay. Yeah, definitely. All right. So uh, what do you think then? The rest of this team, uh, they still have some uh, issues. They have a center question. They have a right guard question. Uh, they got a cornerback question. Uh, what do you what do you think? It's tough. I, I'm really tempted to 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 pull a, a massive Pete Carroll move. And even though we gave them draft Jaylen somebody Carter, that's uh, three rounds uh, too early, 
Yeah. <laughs> or double dip here and oh. go with Tyree Wilson. Tyree Wilson is why not? Still, again, I, I have he last this long. First, yeah, this is right where I have him going as a, as a late first rounder. Yeah. But it just seems like it's something that is outside the box of of what the norm would think. Um, I, it, and I do think it's a little rich for the, the first center of the draft, Schmidt. Yeah. Well, then um, again, that's why he probably will get drafted by Seattle. Ah, there you go. There's your answer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they are thin at center. That, I don't think they even have an option on the roster right now at center. No. So I also think they need some, uh, another wide receiver. But again, I think you can get these guys. And that's up to two. Eskridge, too. Because you would think yeah. Goodwin will be back. But yep. uh, yeah, Eskridge has got to – well, don't they know more than we do whether or not they believe yep. in Eskridge. Yep. So I'm going to I'm gonna go with that double dip idea. Go with Tyree Wilson and just give this – group uh the defensive line something that you know they used to have the legion of boom on the backside corner safety i think they're going to go on the other side of it and just try to stack that defensive line that front with uh, talent and if these guys both pan out Jalen carter and tyree wilson they hit their upside you need it. You're, you're you're talking about some some big time impact yep. remember they get and they get adams back and they, get, they did pretty good in the draft last year with those dbs so yeah excellent. Uh, they got to get better up front okay next up is the the chargers and uh, look at apparently uh, they look they've restructured some contracts including Keenan Allen so uh, he'll he'll be back uh, I thought that was a possible cap casualty but apparently not um, so you take a look and I still believe and look I'm I'm gonna think really hard about it before I make this decision that they go with Bajan Robinson because mm-hmm. I just think that I, I think they have to be smart enough to understand that they need to 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 put Eckler back back into the position he was better at. And that, that, that was more of a, a, a co-number one that you could also use these two guys like Melvin Gordon and Eckler as much as possible. That's when they was just dangerous, a lot more dangerous. I think they're less dangerous when it's just Eckler. So I think they're going to think about that. Uh, they definitely need a left guard, uh, no question. And um, I don't think it's, it's probably too early for a left guard, though. Um, they can, Oh, run, run defense. You know, they got to do something about that run defense. At this point in time, who's the best run defender that's available between linebackers and defensive linemen? I was just on the phone with someone last night. These, this C tackle class is, is a little worrisome if you're trying to get. Some, that's what I thought. Habit. I figured this that, is like, too early. That's that's why I, I, yeah. I wanted to I mean, know I love, if there was someone I, I was missing. I like Keanu Benton from Wisconsin. I just think this is a little high for him. Yeah. He just kind of screams day two to me. I mean, I wouldn't call it a bad pick, but. It's kind of just adding to what they already have on that team. Yeah. You know, Jack Campbell would like, fit in nicely here for the Chargers. Yeah, he would have. Yep. yep. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and, and roll and and like I said, I'm, I'm going for it. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna screw. Yeah. You know what? They, I, and look, but by the way, they do need a nickel corner, but I don't know if they're bringing back Callahan or not. So right. that's the thing. I'm just not completely sure about. So um, and and a cornerback though could still go, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ruffle some feathers here and go Robinson at running back. All right. That's smart. I was, I was going to give him to Baltimore if you didn't take him. So oh, you know, even better reason. Just yeah. He's, yeah. He's one of the top 10 players in this draft and, you know, running back slide a little bit, but at some point you're not talking about a traditional running back here. You're talking about maybe one of the best pass catchers on your team day one. So um, imagine having both I, him I and Eckler in the backfield. I love the fit. I love it. And I think, Kellen Moore is coming from a system that he really did maximize two backs. That's right. There you go. And at Elliott, I think that's going to – you'll see him do the same here. All right. I like it even better. Baltimore is up next. Uh, the uh, the, uh, the Ravens, which uh, direction do they go now with Robinson off the board? I, I think with the, the – Marcus Peters has played his last days in Baltimore, I believe. Um, it looks like they're cutting some dead weight. They just let go of uh, Calais Campbell – who prediction, I think he's going to end up with Wink Martindale on the Giants. Just something I kind of have a feeling with wanting that A-gap pressure. Keep an eye on that one. Um, but, you know, with the rest of that secondary in Baltimore, A, often gets banged up. B, they put some kind of day two resources, day three resources into that group in recent years. And I think they have to use another first rounder. This is a team that uses a lot of first round picks on the defensive backfield. Why not? It's and I, I, the decision makers there are still the same. I think they're going to go with this is where I think Ringo is going to come off the board. Keith Ringo, from, corner from Georgia. All right. Looks good. Minnesota. Oh, you took a corner just ahead of Minnesota. I'm not even going to, I'm not doing nothing in this yeah. one. All right. Who's the best cornerback available? 
Deontay <laughs> Banks. It has, it's, it's, you know, I, I don't Cam Smith. I'm still a Cam Smith guy. Um, but Banks is the consensus. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the upside of Banks is is going to far outweigh the up, upside of of uh, Cam Smith. All right, so that's uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go with Banks. The, only, the the other thing that they could do is go wide receiver. Um, yeah. But yep. they, the defense, they got to get a corner. I mean, yeah. they just can't wait. Uh, but wide receiver, you know, because you, you think that at this point it's it's the fifth or sixth corner versus the number two receiver. Mm-hmm. And but I just if they miss on a cornerback in the first round, you know, then it's I, yeah. So unless they do something in free agency where they grab sign a couple of corners, uh, I have to go corner here. Yeah. All right. Jacksonville. Jacksonville is a, a tough team to figure out, to be honest with you. I'm just looking at their depth chart, make sure I didn't miss any moves that happened today. Um, their entire defense is pretty much coming back. They're pretty much signed, ready to rock. Um but what, what were they really missing out last year? I thought that Trevon Walker, you're not going to get the most out of him um, unless you have a little bit more presence inside. Is there an, an interior pass rusher or someone that's uh, an exterior pass rusher that you can move Trayvon Walker? That's, that's the value of taking him number one last year is that no matter what you put around him, he can be the guy that shifts around. So I'm talking about there's two guys, there's two defensive uh, pass rushers that are jumping off the screen at me right now. Okay. And they both have very similar grades on my stack. They're back to back. One of them is smaller, more explosive from the same program, Nolan Smith from Georgia, um, who blew up the combine, ran a sub 4-4 at 235 pounds. And I think he's going to have a Brian Burns type kind of impact at the next level. Um, Will McDonald is a name that you need to keep an eye yeah. on. A lot of people are saying this kid's going to go first round, no question. But the other one that I'm intrigued by, based on how Jacksonville plays defense um, under Mike Caldwell, is Lucas Van Ness, the the defensive end, hybrid DN, D tackle from Iowa. Um, Blew up the combine as well. Weird situation with how they use the starting lineup out there under Ferenc, where they basically just give starting roles to seniority. And Van Ness... It comes into the league with, I think, uh, less than a handful of starts under yeah, his belt. It's crazy. But there's no denying he was the best player on that defense. So just kind of like a weird situation there. Um, just wanted to bring that up. So, so basically wh- what you're saying is is that Van Ness – see, because Van-, Van Ness's position is right. more needed for Jacksonville. Right. Edge rusher is almost like an added bonus because they have right. edge rushers now. Yeah. But you know, and, when you and run a 3-4, you can never have enough edge rushers. rushers. Yeah. So I'm going to go with the size. Um, I think Caldwell is going to want to go with the size here okay. and, and a little bit more run defense kind yeah. of centered as well. So I'm going to give them Lucas Van Ness, the DN from Iowa. Got it. Okay. There you go. Uh, next up, the New York Giants. And as you mentioned, uh, you're, you're thinking that this is uh, where Calais Campbell uh, might end up, correct? Is that your guess? That's my guess. Right. Just the, the the Martindale connection and the, the desire for Martindale to get a little bit more A-gap pressure. And then, uh, look, the big news, of course, was uh, tagging Barkley and signing Jones. So they got they, yeah. they, they did what we kind of thought they were going to do. Uh, so that's not a surprise. But this is easy. So just like the Vikings, they got an easy one here. So who is the best receiver uh, uh, available? And you've got uh, – uh, well, you tell me because Johnson – uh, is he's got a, a lot of the tools that we talked about as far as the size combo and everything else and the size, the speed and the game breaking ability. And, but there's still some questions about him and you got Addison and flowers had a really good, but I can't flowers can't go ahead of Addison or Johnson. I don't think, but you tell me what's uh, how's the wide receiver situation unfolding right now. You know, I think this is what I think they're going to want. Um, I think they're going to want size and a vertical threat. They just re-signed Sterling Shepard, who is not going to factor into the decision-making process. Yeah, he's a bonus. Yeah, yeah, he's a bonus. Wondell Robinson, who they traded up for last he's year. He's a small guy. Round, yep. Is all-time small. Yep. Like, his wingspan and height radius is all-time Yeah, so small. they don't – So that's like – that would have been Zay Flowers. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, like, trust me, I think Zay Flowers fits what they – they want more speed. They need more speed. They need more yard after catchability. But you keep throwing guys that are 5'8", 5'9", that's at Daniel work, Jones. No. It's just not going to work. And I think, you know, to quote Dan- Daniel Jeremiah, when you build a wide receiver room, you, you want to think about a basketball team. You want a point guard, um, a possession guy, a downfield threat, someone with size. And right now, Quentin Johnston, who I just want to get uh, a confirmation on his measurements real quick. I have it in front of me. 
I don't think he measured in as big as I thought he would. Um, so we're looking at just under 6'3", 208, 33 and a half inch arms. So that is, it's a wide radius. And I think that's what they need. Yep. Um, he does come with issues. I do think teams are going to, whoever drafts him is going to have to be patient, but he's a first rounder though. He's definitely a first rounder. And I, I've, I've been saying this since before the season, he has more upside than any receiver in this draft. Yep. And I trust the Giants coaching staff as much as any offensive staff in the NFL. All right. So yeah, I think that's a no brainer there. Uh, the Cowboys are next, and uh, so you, you, there's uh, some different ways. Again, we talked about the Cowboys last mock, that they can go in 100 different ways based on free agency. and Not, right. not a whole lot's changed since then. A little bit, but not a whole lot. So mm-hmm. what, what are you thinking? Well, you know, I, I think they like what they got out of their two rookie tight ends last year, Ferguson and Hendershot. Um, I do think they're going to go let Schultz walk in free agency. So that's a little bit of a gamble that if they're going to roll forward with a fourth rounder and an undrafted free agent from last year, even though they did flash, um, they flashed in complementary roles. They did not flash in starting roles. And I think that team, that organization, they always want a, a tight end with presence. But I do think they're going to wait on use. I don't think they're going to use a first round pick on that spot. And, um, and do you the, think that if Johnson were available, they would they would they would think about him? Quentin? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think they're looking at wide receiver right here. I mean, right now, I'm kind of torn between giving them Zay Flowers, which is a, a, a nice compliment to what they have. But again, you're getting another receiver in there that, you know, it's funny. His, his pro profile fits in with T.Y. Hilton, and that's the kind of profile they went for last year. When that wide receiver room started to break down, they neglected size and went after movement traits. And that's what Zay Flower has. Um, so that that's kind of where I'm leaning right now. Okay. I just want to give... The defensive side, I mean, what they're doing at linebacker, I think Parsons is going to be a full-time edge rusher sooner than later. I don't think you're going to see him off the ball that much anymore. Van Der Esch is a free agent. Free agent. Barr is a free agent. Um, you know, Damone Clark flashed last year as a fifth rounder. I think you know, that I, they, I really think they have to. I, I think they're looking at Clark as being, you know, the, the, the guy. Yeah, the guy. Yeah. 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 I agree. So I, I think they neglect uh, using. A first rounder at linebacker at this spot. Um, could they use another corner? What are they doing with Anthony Brown after his injury? Deron Bland flashed late, uh, late last year. The, Donovan Wilson was a huge part of that defense, but I don't think there's a safety that fits the bill. I'm going to go with the gut here again. I'm going to go with Zay Flowers and just and and kind of let that that group of C.D. Lamb, Flowers, and Gallup kind of run wild next year, and hopefully they get something out of the rookie from last year, David Tolbert. All right. So back to back uh, NFC East teams. Uh, Buffalo is next, and with Singleton still not signed, uh, and I haven't heard anything yet. So I don't know what's going on there because if he is not re-signed, then running back definitely becomes a big uh, could be could be here. And, and you know what? If Robinson were still available and they don't re-sign Singletary, well, I don't think he's getting past the Bills. That would be that would be unfair. Yeah, I don't want that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but you know what? Maybe this is where it's possible that they could go for. Uh, look, I don't know what they feel about Morse. I'm down on Morse because I think they could be better. I could they could improve pretty much everywhere almost on an offensive line outside maybe of Dawkins. Uh, so, I but I don't know if they feel the same way. Um, you know, right tackle maybe makes a little bit more sense. But look, I don't know if they've given up. They probably haven't given up on Brown. You know, I know how how we might think and you might think, but you know they might be pigheaded about that and still feel yep. that they can get something out of it. Safety becomes a pretty big need. Um, not sure Poyer will be back. Who's the Who's the next safety past Branch? Uh, Sydney Brown. I love Sydney Brown. Um, I don't know if he's first rounder. Jordan Battle, I think, is someone that you feel safe with, but you also need to know that I don't think he's going to be a playmaker. Yeah, and so it might be too early to safety, take a safety. Yeah, and Sidney Brown was a huge playmaker. I mean, I have Sidney Brown as my two number two safety. I can put that out in the open now. I, I've been wanting this guy for for years, um, just to get cut in the draft. Um, but and he he's a playmaker. He's six interceptions this past year. He's explosive, fast, physical, plays multiple roles. Um, I'm gonna I'm just, gonna go with the I'm gonna go with the guy in a position that they just love, and that's edge rushers. Okay, and because of the fact that Von Miller, when he got hurt. They had no edge rushing. It just yep. one guy, and it was all over. So uh, they're going to go back in that department, and I'll go with uh, Nolan Smith. 
Funny, that's what we did last time. And that, and that was like, oh, did my we? Same, yeah, that was my same exact reasoning is once Von Miller went down, they they lost a lot, obviously, right? One of the best pass rushers in football, but Nolan Smith has a very similar physical profile to that. And I think he kind of it's almost just like an automatic shoe in and a great spot. I mean, I don't know how much Von Miller has left in him. We don't how many years left. This Especially is a great after player. the injury. Exactly. Nolan Smith to learn from him. I mean, I love the idea of putting guys behind veterans that are almost done with a very similar play style um, and skill set. And I think that's a great fit. All right. The Bengals are up. And Cincinnati, look at them. And, yes, no question, they need offensive line help still. Yep. Um, they could also use a pass rushing defensive tackle. They can use a number one corner. Uh, yeah, there's they, they got some stuff, you know. They do. They do. And they got to replace. Well, they're going to replace Bates with Dax Hill, so that's no real yeah. problem there. Yeah, I'm trying to play this like this this game in my head that you know they're going to be spending a lot of money soon on Chase and Burrow. So, what are the other positions that need value in, in the in their contracts in the coming years? Corner, edge rusher. Um, like you said, the defensive tackle market is blowing up now with seeing what Deron Payne just got paid. Dexter Lawrence is next in New York. Um, but I, I don't think this is an organization that's going to reach, right? I think if they take any of the corners here, maybe Cam Smith makes sense. He's one of the guys I'm thinking about right now. I don't think there's a D tackle or an edge presence that's worth going after. Um, I think they're going to hold on to T. Higgins, so I don't think they need to replace him via the draft right now. They, By the way, they do need – they will draft a receiver at some point. They will. Or they will. sign I just one. Don't think it, yeah, yeah, I don't think it's going to be an early pick. Yeah, it doesn't you need know, to be, no. The amount of help – that they need up front doesn't necessarily need to come in the form of a tackle or, or guard or a center. I think the, the, the help that they can get up front can come from one of the biggest needs on that team that jumps out at me every time I look at their depth chart and it's at tight end. And I think this would also be a pick that helps burrow in the red zone. Once teams can uh, are just getting a little bit too much attention to Higgins and chase Darnell Washington is going to be a surprise first round. Yeah, that pick would be here. that would be the best tight end fit for the Bengals. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because the dude, I'm telling you, I can't stress this enough. He is probably every bit of a run blocker yes. as any offensive lineman that's in the draft yeah. right now. <laughs> yes, and I think he makes that impact. You're not going to you're not going to draft a tight end round one so he can run block, but and you can and you can resign Hayden Hurst as well. Yeah, and and I and I think there's some untapped ability there as a pass catcher. All right, sounds good. Let's now move on to the New Orleans Saints, and uh, the Saints making the Derek Carr move. Thank goodness. And uh, looking at uh, the Saints, they definitely need help at skill positions. Uh, because uh, Kamara is, is might might be the only uh, dangerous running back they have, but they're not going to take care of that here. Wide receiver, definitely, because Thomas and Landry might not be back, so they need some more wide receiver help. Uh, they got to get some interior offensive line help. Uh, we don't know what they're doing with their defensive tackles. Well, looks like right now uh, Street's the only guy uh, that uh, that they have to take care of, but slot corner. Uh, is also something to keep an eye on. Um, I don't know. I think wide receiver though makes a, makes a lot of sense here with uh, with still some good. Uh, you know, you have Addison still up there. I think he's definitely a first rounder. So I'll go ahead and put him in there. I like it. Good value there. All right, Addison. It is. Next up, we got the last two teams, the Super Bowl teams, Philadelphia and Kansas City. Eagles, pick number two, and uh, you had pick number one, and you went with Witherspoon, the corner. So I have I have KC right now, right? Oh, no, no. No, Philly. Oh, oh, that, that, never mind, never mind. We're going Philly first here. So the first pick I have from Philly, just want to confirm. Witherspoon. Was Witherspoon, okay. So, again, am I going to stick with the trends here of lines, 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 corners, corners, corners? Or do you throw a little curveball here, something that I don't think they got out of Quez Watkins, that true deep threat that can be a deep threat week to week? Do they get another receiver here to add to A.J. Brown? Why not? Sister possession, yard after catch. Devontae Smith, who is that short to intermediate deep threat that can occasionally knife through the top of the secondary. And then add the deep threat in this class in Jalen Hyatt. 
does it make sense from a schematic perspective that you have a guy that can just stretch the entire defense and open up everything yeah, underneath sure. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard. I'm trying to decide between him and going after um, the the uh, running back from Alabama, Jameer Gibbs, uh, just because I think they're going to add to that backfield. Yeah, yeah but, that's true. And Another running back's possible, welcome. sure. Yeah, and it's, you know, first-round running back. I guess it's it really all depends at this point is who do you think is a better player. Right, that's true. And right now I think Gibbs is a better player, and I think he could do more for a team um, as a pass catcher out of the backfield. Um, do they have enough to use? And again, a lot of this is going to depend on what they're going to do with all these older free agents. Maybe right. they let them all right. go, or maybe they resign yeah. one or two of them, but you yeah. know I mean, that lost- that's another position that they're going to try to restock. Yes, absolutely. And I just don't know how early they're going to do yeah. it. Um, they lost Javon Hargrave today. Um, they have a hole at the tackle now, but again, I think that's why you drafted Jordan Davis last year. I'm going to go with something that I think most most teams, most people are not going to see coming. I think I'm going to go Jalen Hyde here and just give them an. Oh, you're going to go Hyde over offense. Gibbs, okay? I'm going to go Hyde over Gibbs just because I, I feel like what you need out of that backfield they can get um, day two, day three. All right, yeah, and 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 seeing the Eagles uh, with this offense go wide receiver, that's not going to be a surprise. So yeah, but yeah, I, because really, if you look at it, they have two receivers. The other guys are right. just guys. Yep, so exactly. Yep. If anything, they definitely need more depth there. All right, Kansas City uh, will round things out because the Dolphins do not have a pick, so only 31 picks in the draft. And taking a look, uh, again, we mentioned Wiley, but they replaced him with Jawan Taylor. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Um, that was uh, a, a smart move. So Taylor comes in at right tackle. The, the thing we don't know yet, though, is whether or not they're going to resign Orlando Brown. That is a big deal because I just there's no way they can look. Niang uh, is is just better off as a swing kind of guy, a backup. No way you're relying on him. So I think tackle uh, is a priority. But I don't know at this point if they're resigning Orlando Brown or not. Uh, I think that they can definitely use another defensive tackle, um, uh, especially with the both guys are free agents at this point. Um, you know, uh, talking to um, my Kansas City analyst, uh, he thought that it was possible that maybe if Zadarius Smith was unhappy and uh, he'd want to go somewhere else. So that's see, that's the thing we don't talk about are trades, but there are that that's a trade that could happen. You Absolutely, know, Minnesota because teams want players like Zadarius Smith, big yes. time. Yeah, uh, and Kansas City can use edge rush help. Definitely. I mean, you know, Carl Aftis was a nice pickup, but they don't have a whole lot on the edge uh, past that. So, and then cornerback, um, I think they have uh, four guys, but, you know, you are relying on a couple of seventh rounders. I think they could use another corner. So I think you got corner, edge rush, and uh, you can, uh, by the way, you could also go with the tight end here, if, if, you know, to, to eventually take over Kelsey. They can go with another running back here. Maybe Gibbs would be a really good pick. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, um, that would be a good pick. Yeah, especially with what he could do in the passing game. Yeah, so, um, but tackle, I think uh, uh, that's the thing. I just don't, I, I can't guess this. Orlando Brown, who's the best tackle on the board? Bergeron, Dewan Jones, I, I think is the. Oh, that's right, Dewan Jones he, still available? Yeah, yeah, he's. I think there's going to be a lot of love hate with him around the league. I mean, the size is just next level, and that can hide some of the issues, but. The issue with his redirect is is a problem, but you know who had a similar issue coming out of college is Orlando Brown. Oh yeah. So that that's you know size can make up for that. And we're talking size that you very you very rarely will see with DeJuan Jones. I like Matthew Bergeron a little bit better just because I trust his his movement traits a little bit more, and I um, I think he's got some some versatility inside outside versatility as well. Uh, Darnell what, Wright. Uh, Darnell Wright is the name. Who who else? Darn out right from Tennessee. Yeah. I don't like him as a first rounder. Some do. All right. I'm going to go ahead and because I don't know about Brown yet, I'm going to go with the player that you talked about earlier that's moving up the draft boards and they can use edge rush help. And I'm going to put Will McDonald in there. Got it. Love it. Yeah. I think they're losing Frank Clark. That's a, that's a great move. Great scheme schematic fit too. And yeah, I mean, based on who I've talked to and again, I don't like to listen to too much right now, but, um, some are saying this kid's going to be a top 15 pick. So to get him here at this pack point in the draft, it's a good value. All right. There you go. Yeah, because, look, you, you're going to do these mock drafts, hundreds of them. 
hundreds of different opinions in mock drafts. And the fact is, no matter how much you keep, how many times you keep doing it, there are always going to be two or three players that end up falling. Yeah. Always. And just like Agreed. the actual NFL draft, two yep. or three players are always going to fall. You just don't know who they're going to be. So, yeah. Uh, all right. So there you go. Mock draft number two in the books. We are going to do our third mock draft the first week of April. Once your final rankings are out and available over at rlads.com, then we'll do our third mock draft. Uh, we will, uh, in between our third and our final mock draft, which is going to be the week of the draft, we'll be taking care of, uh, we're going to have eight division previews, basically draft previews. It'll be after free agency and before the draft, and we're going to go team by team. Uh, we're going to be doing it by divisions. So we're going to have eight individual videos by division going into each team's uh, specific needs following free agency and before the draft. So that's basically what you're going to get here uh, before the NFL draft. And then when the NFL draft is over, we still have a lot to talk about. So we're going to be dissecting every team's draft and off season overall. So can't wait to do that. And by the way, the other show we're going to do is going to be the winners and losers show. We haven't scheduled that yet, but at some point before the draft, um, we're going to have a winners and losers video, and that's going to be a, a combination of the all-star games, the combine, the pro days. Uh, and um, is that it? Yeah, that's, that's it. it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So yep. that'll give us a good, an, an opportunity to put them all together and, and, and say who, who's, who's, you know, who's been a uh, uh, positive, positively moving up the boards and who's been negatively moving down including the injuries. Cause you mentioned uh, the kid from USC got hurt. So is he the only yeah. real major injury? Um, at the top of my head over the pre-draft process. Yes. There's some guys that are a little dinged up from the season still off season surgeries, but someone that was actually injured in the pre-draft process. Um, like the kid from Michigan last year, um, in, uh, towards Achilles at the, uh, at the pro day war, he's towards ACL at the combine during one of the drills. So, okay. Still, still going to get drafted, I think, in the middle of the draft, but it probably get boosted down uh, a round or two. All right. And, of course, we value your opinion. So let us know what you think. Questions, comments, uh, it, it, let us know. Uh, we will uh, definitely go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you guys. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And, um, obviously, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of these videos before and after the draft. Uh, like the video. And share the videos if uh, you enjoyed what you see. And, and uh, Dave, appreciate your time as always. Thank you, Greg. See you soon. All right.